In today's video, metabolic adaptations to dieting. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I have a really cool video for you today. It's actually May 4th and I usually do this on May the 1st or the first day of each month, but that's a review of an article from a monthly publication called MASS, the Monthly Application in Strength Sport. Now, this publication put out by three amazing individuals who I love to death. Uh, they have been providing me quality content and information for over a year now. They're actually on their second volume of MASS, so if you're not already familiar with it, click the link below, check out some of the things that they offer. It's basically a monthly review. They come out once a month and it reviews research that's re relevant to things like you know strength, fat loss, um, long-term progress in the gym, physique competitions, anything that's related to what we're interested in, right? And the real issue there is that there's just so much research and they sort through it and give you real world feedback on the actual research that has been published that is relevant to what we do. Now, Eric Helms, Mike Zordos, and Greg Knuckles have done an amazing job, but this month I'm reviewing something that was not written by them. And I'm actually kind of excited to do it because the man who I'm reviewing is named Eric Trexler. Now, Eric Trexler was working on his PhD under Abby Smith Klein up at North Carolina, who was also a friend of mine. And while he was doing that, he actually came to my bodybuilding show for a couple years and got some information from my competitors research that he was doing on things like metabolism, metabolic adaptation, body fat, things associated with competitive bodybuilders. So I feel like maybe there's a chance that I impacted Eric Trexler in a positive way and now I'm going to review his review article on this month's issue of Mass. So basically Eric goes into the discussions of what metabolic adaptations occur while we're in a fat loss phase and what we can do to attenuate that or make it less aggressive and then also what we should pay attention to in the future. And so first let's go into what is metabolic adaptation. And the article does a really good job of explaining this because we tend to look at our bodies and our metabolisms as something that, you know, should benefit us. But what metabolism is really all about is survival the humans need to survive. We live in a period of time where, for most of us, if you're watching this video at least, you're not worried about your next meal, you're not worried about anything other than what makes you happy from day to day. But if you think about evolution, millions of years of evolution, uh, when food was not readily available, there was a necessity for the body to adapt in a manner that allowed us to survive longer. Unfortunately for us that are interested in getting lean and jacked and tan, as Eric put it, um, it does not benefit us when it comes to getting leaner because our bodies have become very adept at survival. So as energy is not as available, our bodies adapt to that period. And so for those of us that are looking and interested in getting low body fat, you'll notice some things happen that make getting to low body fat not as easy and makes you suffer a little bit and makes you question why you're doing what you're doing. Well, we all know things like hunger and a, a slowing of fat loss happen over time, hormonal changes. And Eric does a good job discussing why those things happen. And something I've noticed over working with clients for years and myself, um, one of the biggest things was NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. For those of us are not dieting or in a fat loss phase, we generally have the same amount of activity every day. But when calories get low and body fat gets lower and we're in a deficit, we tend to start conserving energy. Um, my friend Eric Helms said he noticed that he stopped bobbing his head to music in the car, right? Things that I noticed, I remember one prep, I was playing a lot of ping pong and I just stopped playing ping pong. Well, turns out ping pong was burning a lot of calories for me. So what did I have to do to make up for that? Probably had to do more cardio because I was burning less calories through my NEAT. So one thing I definitely like to pay attention to now with myself, my clients, anyone losing fat is lifestyle, activity. The, the Fitbits are great now because you can actually track your daily steps. And while that may not be the most accurate representation, you do start to notice trends. If you're less active, 
and you're trying to lose weight, well, you're gonna have to compensate for that. So I think it's very good that we have a discussion with those that are in weight loss or trying to lose weight. Have you had a decrease in your daily activity, in your need? And if you have, you're gonna have to account for that if you wanna keep the fat loss going. He also discusses the new research that discusses diet breaks. The idea that we, with controlled manner, while we're in a fat loss phase, raise calories up to our expected maintenance, not what we were doing previous to the diet because maintenance calories adjust. So a diet break consists of a week or two weeks where you raise calories up, bring cardio down, and you put yourself back in maintenance, and then you go back into a fat loss phase. And the research there shows some very positive things that two groups that go through the same fat loss period with the same caloric deficit, the group that did the diet breaks, well, they lost more fat and they had less negative metabolic adaptations. So why wouldn't we take long diet breaks while we're dieting? Well, most of us don't have patience. And if you're me and you're working with competitors, can't afford to usually take two weeks off from competing. I do use diet breaks in the week or three or four day periods, um, depending on how much time we have left to do. But I think it's very important that for general lifestyle clients that are interested in losing body fat, we not just take a hard line approach to always being in a deficit and always adding more cardio. When things stall, we can introduce diet breaks into the conversation. It can be a little scary for some people. They don't usually want to eat more food or do less cardio when they're trying to lose weight, but explaining to them that this may benefit them in the long term helps. And an article like this by Eric helps you prove your point. You've got research that shows what you're doing as a coach is the right thing. And when you have experience and education backing you, you are really set up for success. So this is a great thing that Mass is doing. So the article goes on to discuss the best way. And I think this probably goes without saying with my channel. If you're watching my videos, there's a high likelihood that you like to lift weights. Well, one of the things that happens when you have a severe calorie restriction is you might lose some of your lean body mass. And when you lose lean body mass, you also lose metabolic rate quicker, okay? So now you're gonna have less lean body mass. You're also going to have less NEAT. So as you're losing weight, you're less active and you have less muscle. So that can lead to a rather rapid adaptation to your basal metabolic rate or resting metabolic rate, whichever one you prefer to pay attention to. So what's an important thing to do during this period? Well, we as competitive physique athletes, bodybuilders, we train throughout our fat loss phase. So we minimize the amount of lean body mass that we lose through a dieting phase. Our goal is to keep or continue to add lean body mass for as long as possible. So I find that lean body mass loss is minimized, minimized, when you have the focus on a physique competition because you're going to be in the gym on a regular basis. However, if you're watching this, just because you're interested in the idea of metabolic adaptation and you're not currently resistance training and you're just going on a restrictive diet with tons of cardio, understand that you might have more issues because you're not lifting weights, okay? You might have more issues with stalling, you might have more issues with rebounding because you're not in the gym lifting or doing something active. I'm not suggesting that everybody has to be a meathead like myself, but if you're a meathead out there, props. Um, but for those that just want to do something active, resistance training, calisthenics, push-ups, pull-ups, something active is going to help keep some more lean body mass. Now, what else do I think about metabolic adaptation? Well, I think it's something as a coach that I deal with on a daily basis. I think a lot has been made out over the last few years about things like metabolic damage and, and of course the term damage implies that something has permanently changed. I don't think that's the case. I don't think there is any damage done to your metabolism. I think that it is simply that your body has adapted in such a way that it becomes chronic all the time. Hormonally speaking, you can get into a very bad place if you've gone through many cycles of extreme fat loss and reversed, okay? So what we wanna focus on is getting you in and out of a diet the best manner possible, okay? And that comes through education. So things like this, mass, people like Eric Trexler are really doing a great service for those of us that are coaches, that are involved in weight loss, that are interested in weight loss. 
and I'm not trying to reach my bodybuilders, my clients. They already know what I'm doing. I talk about it all the time. I have a bunch of videos on how to fix your metabolism, how to reverse diet. I have videos showing my clients that have gone through reverse diets, through fat loss phases, okay? This is for educating those around us. If you know someone that has been spinning their wheels for years, losing and gaining the same 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds, okay, by going on a restrictive diet just to go on vacation then coming home and putting all the weight on back on plus some, this is where you can share some information with them, okay? Explain to them what metabolic adaptation is, give them the tools, show them these articles, subscribe to Mass, and you're going to benefit. That's going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you're having an awesome Friday. I got to get back to work. I got some competitors competing this weekend and next weekend, and I'm just so excited about it. So I hope you guys are going to have an awesome weekend because I am, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.